All right, it's uh, a new week, and uh, I'm just getting back onto this clay. I'm going to, first of all, I cut off the uh, nose of the, the wolf, only because I can't see the face without uh, taking this off. Can't see the face of the warrior. And I need to clean up the face a little bit. I can't do that with that on there because what it look it shadows the face. So I'm gonna put the nose in a drawer so it won't get smashed around. And uh, I'm gonna use some of these rubber tools here. And uh, these are the tools that uh, I got from Sculpture Depot called uh, uh, clay sh shapers. And uh, they come in different shapes and sizes, but they're all pliable wood. They look like brush. Uh, little paintbrushes, but they're not. Uh, they're rubber tools, and I've got uh, six of them. So I'm going to be working with, uh, I think, this one here for a little while. Well, that's really nice. That's like having a really small finger that you can get in and and uh, smooth with your finger. Okay, I've got this uh, tool I got from Sculpture Depot with a rounded tip on it, or a ball on the end of it. I'm just going to get in there and clean out the little area there. And this has got the uh, smaller ball on this end of it. If you want to get tools like this, you might check out the video I did yesterday. I'll put a link up to it here. Um, it's a great place for tools. I know this is going to be covered with the uh, headdress, but it uh, doesn't hurt to have the detail there. What I'm trying to do is uh, balance the cheeks so the cheeks on this side look the same as the cheeks on the other side. You don't want to have one cheek way down and uh, different shape than the one on the other side. I really like these rubber tools. Like I said, it's like having an extension to your finger. A really, really small pointed finger. Now this one's got more of a, it's a round tube with an angle cut into it and then a flat uh, uh, thing on the end of it so that, uh, oh cool. I like that. I, I gotta tell you, I've never used these rubber tip tools before, and it's, uh, I'm pretty impressed. They're strong enough that you can cut into the clay a little bit and shape areas. I gotta fill in back. Any deep recess behind an object like this uh, braid here, there's a real deep uh, hole right there behind the feather, and I'm gonna fill that in right now with this clay. 
and it, it's taking quite a bit of clay actually because it's a, a real deep one. Any, anything like that will uh, cost more to produce because the uh, foundry either has to cut the feather off or they have to uh, clean out uh, the, the bronze after it's cast you know, of any shell that might be left inside a, a hole like this and if they have to work on it for a period of time uh, if it's you know let's say for instance uh, if uh, if it takes ten dollars to for the uh, time of the person to work on this area in other words if the time they spend on it cost me ten dollars uh, in the final charge for producing the uh, bronze mm -hmm. then that ten dollars is multiplied uh, to a certain extent uh, to about a hundred dollars uh, in the selling price uh, in that area anyway and so what you're doing is adding a hundred dollars to your uh, sculpture in the gallery because it get the foundry had to take uh, ten dollars worth of their time to uh, work on it it's economics 101 if they have to work on it for a long period of time it costs you money and in turn makes your object or your clay or your bronze a little more out of the reach of somebody And if you get a lot of those then it really adds up so what I'm trying to do by filling in behind an object like that is to keep the foundry from charging me a whole lot of money for cleaning out something I can take a half hour to fix myself. For instance on the shield which I don't have showing right now I have feathers with real deep uh, vacant areas behind them and if they've got to cast those feathers separately that's an added cost because they have to make a mold of those things and if they make a mold of each feather and then weld it on that's adding probably 150 to 200 dollars worth of my uh, worth of charges onto reproducing the bronze so anything you can do to make uh, their life a little easier will make your ability to sell your work a lot easier mm -hmm. Now see I've filled in behind this feather using this uh, rubber tip tool and I'm, I'm telling you this is really an amazing tool for that uh, and I still have it look like it's uh, dangling out there this feather here but I've actually got it all filled in back there and when they clean it out it'll be easy and this rubber tool helps me to uh, make the fill in blend a little bit better. Now see I've got two feathers on this side I'm going to put another feather over there and so I'm going to fill in underneath this feather which is under my finger and uh, making little cones of, oh, of uh, clay that I stick inside there and push in with the uh, tool and that fills in behind the feather really nicely. And then I want to show the edge of the feather. Even though I've got it filled in, I want it to look like it's not filled in. I know it, it sounds uh, confusing, but uh, it's really rather simple. The nice thing about this tool is uh makes that fill in really smooth, which... Uh, helps the foundry clean a lot easier. See, the the uh, they pull a wax from the rubber mold that they'll make of this and the wax will have little recesses they make a ceramic mold of the wax and 
that's the destructible mold. That's the one that they uh, pour the bronze into and they melt the wax out of. Or, and vice versa. Um, not necessarily in that order. <laughs> but, uh, if they've got to spend time cleaning out the ceramic mold material from deep recesses in the wax, or where the wax was, which now would be bronze, uh, it costs money. The uh, deep recesses, if there's a, a piece of mold in there, it will have the look of, you, you'll be able to see it because it's a little white spot of ceramic mold. And that white spot will not take the patina or the coloring that you put on your your uh, bronze and if you can't uh, get rid of that then that will glare at the client and show that your clay wasn't or your bronze wasn't produced properly alright that's all I'm going to be doing today is just filling in behind areas so I'm going to end the video here I think you got a pretty good idea what I'm talking about and all I'm going to do today is uh, fill in these little recesses and it just takes forever to do that and it's I got to do it back here underneath his arm and down here behind his shield so it, it'll be like watching water drip off a duck's back if I keep videoing and I don't want to put you guys to sleep. So I'll pick this up tomorrow.